Hello everyone! So as you may have learned in the previous lesson, we have one solution dedicated to server protection and we have another agent focused on endpoint protection. Today we will learn how to set up a policy for each one so you can protect better yourself against common threats like ransomware. Let's get started with a standard endpoint protection, which is the war station endpoint protection, right? And I'm going to open here a policy so you can see the different options we have. And I'm going to focus on something very important that probably not many people notice. And uh, in this case, going to be application control. So if you have used Vision 1 previously, you may be aware of a menu that is called Suspicious Object Management List under the Threat Intelligence menu, as you can see over here. And that list is nothing more than an IOC list. And when you add something over there, obviously you expect us to block it, right? If you add a hash over there, you expect standard endpoint protection to block it. But in order to block it, you need to make sure that application control is enabled. Hashes need to have application control enabled. So uh, just make sure you have this thing enabled over here. You may leave the allow option over here. You don't have to do anything aggressive like lockdown or something like that. Just leave the allow option. It will basically allow anything to run on the computer as usual. It will only block stuff that is located in the IOC list. Next thing I want you to double check here is in the behavior monitoring menu. If you scroll down to the bottom, there is an option here that says specify detail settings. And if you scroll down, you will notice that our some options that probably you may want to double check or you may want to see, um, like for example, host file modification. Uh, that's something that shouldn't be happening in your environment very probably. And if it happens, probably that's an indication of a, an attacker probably trying to redirect the request to a malicious server. So this is something you may probably set up as deny. It depends obviously on, on your policies. It depends obviously on your environment, but that's something probably you may want to check. And there are other options here that you may want to see and double check if you need to. Uh, last but not least important, always, always, always double check at least every, every six months or every year this can exclusions under the real-time configuration. Sometimes there are pretty big exceptions here. Sometimes there are some exceptions that are not needed anymore and that's a perfect place for the malware to hide. So double check those settings over here. Um, also, double check um, the vulnerability protection menu, which is basically the virtual patching. You may leave this as recommended and it will work just fine. If you need to enable a specific rule, you can always do so by changing the rule configuration individually. So let's go to the next option here, which is server and world protection. I think I have another tab for that open over here. Yes, I do have it here. So as you can see over here, uh, let's go to computers and no, let's go to policies. Let's open the Windows Server 2012 policy and let's open the anti malware section. I want you to double check this menu here real time scan. Please, please make sure the schedule is always every day, all day. Unless you have very specific conditions to change this, leave this in every day, all day. Some people have changed this before to other option. So thinking that probably this is a schedule scan, but it's not. This is the real time scan and it must be running every day, all day. Also make sure that under the configuration of the scan itself, you have pretty important things enabled like predictive machine learning. You have to add, take actions like quarantine or for example, behavior monitoring. Make sure you have here enabled the backup and restore ransomware and crypt files over here so you can detect ransomware related behavior and successfully um, fight against it. So those are actually pretty important things for you to notice. Um, also double check the exceptions as, as before. Double check if the exceptions are properly defined in your environment and if you need to update it, please do so. Uh, let's also take a look here at web reputation, pretty important features. Some people don't enable it, but because they think this is probably an user, uh, an end user feature, but it's not. In this case, web reputation allow, allow us to detect command and control communication. So 
is actually pretty important please enable it and in server environment you may probably leave this, this thing this uh, feature between medium and high you may test it and uh, you may set up the appropriate level for you last but not least important uh, we have the intrusion prevention option of course virtual passion we can protect vulnerabilities uh, that are in the os or that are probably in the application right and if you want to do so automatically you have to make sure the last option here is enabled automatically implement intrusion prevention recommendations whenever it's possible you need to have this thing in yes if it is not in yes it will not automatically implement the virtual patch so that's actually pretty important i told you uh probably that this thing works uh with uh, an scan right it works with an scan you need to find out what are the vulnerabilities on the device right so this scan also is set up here in the administration menu schedule task and then you will see an option here that says daily scan computer for recommendation it could be weekly it depends on your environment completely but just make sure you have a task here that says scanned computer for recommendations that's actually pretty important because if that is not enabled uh, then you will not have those virtual patches apply automatically so i think that's all my friends hopefully that makes sense and have a good day